Hello again. Uh, my name is Pete Gerlach. I've been a professional family systems therapist for 31 years. I've been on the planet for over 70 years. During my time as a therapist, I've specialized in trying to understand the very special dynamics in typical step families, families in which there is one, at least one step parent and one step child. Um, I'm also a step everything by personal life experience. I've worked with well over a thousand men and women uh, and students who are in step families, new step families, veteran step families. This is one of a series of videos in which I want to pass on to you what I've learned during that time, those years, studying step families and listening to hundreds and hundreds of people talk about their experience. In this video, I want to distill, in case you're curious, what's it like to live in a step family? I want to highlight a series of six groups of things that typical adults and kids in step families experience. People who are new to step families and who haven't done their homework, roughly when they commit to um, a new partnership and cohabiting and merging several families together, it's roughly equivalent to taking all the members of your family and setting out with backpacks to explore the Amazon jungle without having any maps. Uh, there's a lot of um, new things that you're not prepared for usually in step families and that can cause confusion and heartache and uncertainty and joy. Uh, let me try and be more specific. The first thing that people experience typically in step families is the paradox that on one level a step family is no different than any other family. Men, women, and kids uh, going about their daily business. On another level, structurally and dynamically, typical multi-home step family systems are different than intact biological traditional families in over 60 ways. So that causes a lot of confusion. It's a paradox. Step families are just like bio families and they're very different than bio families. Um, that can cause people to underestimate how confusing and stressful being in a step family can be. That's the second thing that's very common among new step family adults and kids is simply confusion and uncertainty and doubt. Like, what's going on here? What, what's normal? There are no standards in our culture for how to be in a step family. You have to invent your own standards as you go. Um, there's confusion in part because typical step families can have up to 15 weird, strange roles. A, role, a family role is a set of responsibilities. Um, in intact families, bio families, there's grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle, nephew, sister, brother, mother, father. Those are standard roles. In a step family, there are up to 15 more roles with which people generally have had very little experience. Example, step aunt, step cousin, step sister, step mother, step grandmother, um, ex mate in a step family is unique, a unique kind of a role. So these extra roles, until people explore them and stabilize them, can cause a great deal of personal, household, and between household confusion. Another reason for this confusion is that people in step families were combining, but most step families follow divorces and where both divorced mates are still alive, divorced parents. There are at least three families that have to merge over many years. The new step parent, their partner who is a single parent, and the other single parent, those are three families that have to merge. There are over 30 different merger tasks that all members of all three or more families have to master <coughs> over time because there is no rule book <coughs> about how to do a step family merger. 
often uh, merging um, these many aspects of three different families causes a great deal of confusion and conflict and stress. So confusion is something to expect in a new step family for several years after people cohabit and come together. I mentioned conflicts. Step families typically have more conflicts in part because they have more people than biological families. Typical step families can have anywhere from 50 to 70 or more people on all three generations. There are more people and more relationships in typical step families. That frequently can mean more concurrent conflicts. Conflicts over what? The first one is step family identity. Members of a, a step family all often have different points of view. Yes, we're a step family. No, we're not. I don't know if we are. What is a step family? Well, we're sort of a step family, but not really. Um, there can be a good deal of confusion and some conflicts. I say we're a step family. I say we're not. Conflict. So that's one source of conflict that's fairly common. Another related source is who belongs to our step family? I'll tell you what, your ex-mate, <clears throat> even though you've had a child with him or her, um, they're not a member of our family, never will be. Or the ex-mate can say, are you kidding? I'm not part of their family. Well, sure, my kid lives there, but they're not, they're not my family. There can be a lot of confusion and conflict over <coughs> defining who is our step family, who comprises our step family who gets invited, who gets sent invitations and emails, and who hooks up on Facebook as a family member and a relative. That can be stressful and confusing. There are many different co-parenting issues in typical step families that can cause conflicts, significant conflicts. The classic uh, co-parenting issues are child visitation, child custody, child financial support, child education, child health, child holidays. Every one of those can be causes of significant stress, confusion, and conflict in typical step families, um, especially when both biological parents, divorced parents, are alive and in contact. <clears throat> Another source of conflict in step families is over values. Um, in these three or more merging families that are coming together to try and form a cohesive new step family, people have different values over a wide range of things like communication styles. Well, we're up front. We never let the sun go down on a problem. Oh, well, we generally avoid problems. We don't like conflict in our family, so we don't uh, confront each other. Um, that's rare. Many times merging families have different standards and ideas about child discipline. Well, we're, you're too lax. You're too strict. Conflict. Money can be a complex source of conflict in, in and between merging families. See my video on that uh, for more detail. Religion in some step families can cause conflict. We're strict Baptists and we're proud of it. Well, we're Unitarians, so we think Baptists are a little over the, over the line. Um, that can be minor to major source of conflicts, values conflicts. Another source of conflict in typical step families is names, first and last names. Members of emerging step family can have the same name. My brother and your father has the same, they're both Bob. When we say Bob, who are we talking about? Um, titles can be a source of confusion and in some cases conflict. Um, she's my stepmother. No, she's not. She's Jane. Um, many variations of conflicts over step family role titles, R-O-L-E. What do we call each other? 
Finally, another source of conflict, which is complex and unique to every step family, is merging different customs and traditions, including holidays, vacations, births, deaths, birthdays. Um, every family has a unique way of celebrating special events like this, and they have unique rituals, starting with the most basic ritual of all, which is eating. Um, your f there are lots of aspects of meal times in every family that are unique. Um, for instance, uh, we always eat dinner at 5.30. 5.30? That's really early. We're used to eating dinner at 8 o'clock. There are rituals ar around buying food, storing food, preparing food. Who cooks? How do they cook? Do you use seasonings or not? Um, are you vegetarians or not? Uh, are you fish eaters or beef eaters? There's all kinds of rituals and preferences that people wind up both teaching each other in a new step family and or competing over. So they can either be sources of new learning and new experience or they can, merging these things can, uh, rituals in general, uh, can bring about a good deal of stress and conflict and resentment. Another thing that typical people in step families experience, often unexpectedly, is losses. As a step family merges, step families are formed usually after um, biological parents divorce. Step families are formed by the merging of the divorced family and the new step parents family. Sometimes that can be, if both parents are divorced, that can be divorced family, new family, divorced family. There can be three or more families that have to merge. All three generations have to merge. Many different things. As mergers progress, after dating gets serious of a single parent, um, people not only experience changes in their lives, physical and invisible changes, they also experience some significant losses, particularly around cohabiting. Uh, when someone moves into someone else's house with or without children, that changes many, many things. Space, privacy, routines, noise, pets, um, lots of things. Those can be simply changes and or uh, things that get lost. Prize things can get lost. Example, a biological child whose parents have divorced can hang on to the illusion and dream, my parents someday will reunite and will all be a, quote, happy family again, even though you weren't. When their biological parent remarries or forms a new partnership and moves in with a new adult, or a new adult comes to stay, that hope, uh, which is beyond measurement, is lost. Many kids say, I guess that will never happen. That's one kind of many complex, powerful losses that often people are minimally aware of. So my general point here is people in step families can experience some important losses, broken bonds that need to be grieved. They also may not have finished grieving losses from prior parental death or divorce. So healthy grief is something that needs to happen in most step families. Another characteristic in some step families, not all, is the growing startlement like we can't find any other family like us. Bio families are surrounded by families like them. Two parents or one parent with one or more children. Step families, there are over a hundred types of step family. Considering he was divorced, she wasn't, she was divorced, he wasn't, they both were divorced, neither were divorced, one was widowed, one has kids, one doesn't, the other has kids, the other doesn't, one has teenagers, the other doesn't. Lots of variations, which usually means it's very unusual 
if you're a member of a step family to meet people in a similarly structured step family. That can lead to the sort of semi-conscious feeling like we're the only ones on the planet like this. There's nobody who really knows us or is like us. That can lead to a feeling of being alone and isolated. It's true of some step families, not true of others. Um, another thing that's common to members of typical step families is a surprising experience of very little empathy in family and friends um, and the general public and the media and in human service professionals. Lots of people don't know what it feels like to be in a step family and encounter the things that I've just zipped through here. So frequently, if people in a step family need to vent and are looking for empathy, their listeners will sort of say, what? And if the listener is using a biological family as a template to listen, they really won't understand. So often, little empathy and support is something that step family adults and kids uh, can experience. The final thing that's common to all step families is every member has, has many chances to grow as persons, as couples, and as a whole family. There's lots of opportunities to learn, to stretch yourself, and to find new ways of living that are enjoyable and rich and productive. Um, step families are full of unexpected joys and surprises. I don't mean to paint a negative or black picture of step families, but they're very complex. They tend to be very stressful. And a reality is, at least American step families tend to divorce and break up more often than intact biological families. I've just covered an awful lot of information. Uh, typical step families encounter a paradox were the same and different, lots of confusions, um, lots of simultaneous conflicts over a wide range of subjects, many losses and changes to negotiate and grieve, a potential sense of isolation like we're alone, a surprisingly little empathy and real understanding among other people who are not in step families and a lot of opportunities to grow and experience genuine friendship, pleasure, and even love. Um, that's what it's like to be in a typical multi-home step family. I hope you draw from this one implication. If you're considering joining or expanding a step family, do your homework before you commit. See the other Lesson 7 videos, invest a couple of hours of learning at least what I've learned over 31 years as a step family specialist, and get more detail by studying Lesson 7 in my nonprofit website. Here's the link to a whole array of many articles, educational, non-commercial articles about step family life. Thanks for watching.